Yeah, hi everybody. This is another tutorial. Uh, I'm trying to uh, introduce a software to help you draw the bending moment and shear diagrams for beams. Uh, I'll, and the best way is to go through examples on how to do it. The software is called Wimbeam and uh, you can take a look at it here. I'll probably put a link on where to download it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a shareware and I believe after uh, like a month or so of using you, you'll have a f you can use the, f uh, the version for a whole month but after a month uh, when you start up the program it will uh, ask you to wait for probably a minute to run that's all about it, it, it will not uh, just stop working Anyways, I believe the best way to understand how this uh, easy to use software is by going through examples. Uh, so, so let's let's take a look at the first example right here. Okay, uh, don't worry about the uh, problem statement here. I just copied this from a, a textbook I have. Uh, so th this is basically this is the beam we're trying to do right here. It's This is the beam starting from point A to point B. We're trying to draw the shear and bending moment diagram for this beam. But uh, actually what we are used to see is something like this, maybe. We're trying... Yeah, something like this with a bunch of loads. That's what you are used to, or maybe a cantilever or something like this with a point load at the end. So we'll try to convert whatever we have here to um, this, uh, the regular way of drawing or the quick way of drawing, especially in your notes. So if we assume that's the A here, it's a uh, it's a hinge, so it goes like this, and B is a roller, which goes like this. Sorry, yeah, it should go like this, and the beam is basically a straight line like that. And then we'll have a force here, a force here, and a force here each are 800 pounds. I'm going to just write one. And uh, the distances are right here. It's 12 feet, 12 feet, and 12 feet, and 12 feet. So that's the beam we're trying to draw. Uh, let's go ahead and try to do it. Okay, let me switch to the one beam window right here. So a quick introduction. Uh, Basically, the one beam window is divided into three regions. Uh, we will be working with the upper two regions most of the time, but it's a good idea to go through these entries. For example, the description or the units, properties, moment release, support, springs, point loads, and uniform loads. Uh, the way you do it is just you highlight whatever you want and you click the add right here so if you add a description let's say this is a simple beam and you click OK so the description is right here. This is a simple beam. Anyways, these values will will be very clear when we try to print something uh, as a report. Probably uh, this this description goes on the on the first page of the analysis results. Okay, so let's click on units. And before we click on units, uh, let's say I made a mistake here or I wanted to add something. You go and highlight whatever you wrote right here and you click edit and you can go uh, let's say one 
and you go okay so we updated it okay the units let's try to add are we working with English units metric units or just consistent our example is English units but a little bit of warning here if I'm trying to do the bending moment and shear diagrams only I should go with consistent consistent yes the reason being if we look over here we can get reactions after we fill up the uh, required data in this region we can go with reactions or we can get reactions shear force and moment just let's take a look at these two icons rotation and deflection if, if you know your uh, strength of material structure analysis in order for you to get rotation or deflection you need some material properties and geometric properties meaning uh, you will need uh, a modulus of elasticity and uh, a moment of inertia if we look at the example we don't have this uh, information so we're gonna just go with the shear and bending moment diagrams so again in units if I'm gonna go and it's consistent okay okay properties let's add now it says right here the properties of the beam basically starting from x equals 0 all the way to the end of the beam is the beam, uh, does the beam have the same i the same e meaning does it have the same modulus of elasticity does it have the same moment of inertia again in our case we don't have this information available so we just probably let's try a zero value right here meaning that starting from zero all the way uh, we might uh, we do have consistent uh, E and I but again I'm not comfortable putting a zero here let me delete it and go back to the question and see we have 12 12 that's 24 and 24 that's 48 so let's try 48 what will happen please enter a valid number C okay so let's try 0 oh okay I got it now yeah guys if you have to excuse me it's been a while since I've used this software but I, I believe it's a very very nice software anyways let's get a, a, a value for E uh, let's say a thousand and for I let's do 10,000 and voila okay so what I'm telling the program here that starting at X equals to 0 assume E equals to 1000 and I equals to 10,000 let's say that my beam is like right here let's let's just as assume for a second I'm not gonna apply but I'm gonna assume it that my beam from here all the way to here has an E1 value and an I1 value and from here to here it will have another E which is E2 and I2 probably the the beam will look something like this something like this um, this one being uh, steel and this one being let's say copper or brass and the cross section for this uh, let me draw it over here so the cross section may be like this and the cross section for this one is this definitely will have different moment of inertia for those two so in our case E will not change I will not change so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tell the program that's from 0 all the way to the end 
it's the same E and the same I. Do I have any moment releases? No. Okay, what about the supports? If I want to add a support, let's take a look at the window here. The support at x equals to 0, which is this support, is a hinge. So, if I want a hinge, I'll add a 0. I'll put a 0. And the rotation, if I put a 0, it will change it to a fixed end. If I keep a 0 at displacement and leave the rotation with no numbers, it will insert a hinge. That's the first support at x equals 0, the displacement is 0, and there I will allow some rotation. Now I'll add the other support. What I do, I go click on support and add. So what is the uh, where is the second support located? Okay, it's located 48 feet away from 0 and again it has just a 0 displacement and I'll leave the rotation open. Okay, how do you check if these supports or do you, how do you check the length of the beam before you continue? What you do is you go to this tab here which is labeled data and what you do it's just move here you can see the X changing so X equals 0 here and X here is 48 so we are on the right track do we have any springs attached to the beam no do we have point loads exactly yes we do have 1 2 3 and 4 where are they located at 12 feet intervals so what we do we go point load and what is the first one it's at 12 and it's point load pointing downwards so it's a negative sign and it's 800 and we click OK that's the load at 12 now I'm gonna add the second one which is an, another 800 we'll go to point loads and this one is at 24 feet away from the left and negative 800 and now at x equals 12 I do have negative 800 at x equals 24 I do have another 800 again and at x equals what 36 exactly 36 minus 800 and the last one is going to be a point load and at 48 minus 800 before I do the analysis or before I check my answers let's double check that I have the loads at the distances I know the values of the loads from here and the distances are 12 24 36 48 if I check the question 12 24 36 48. Now, how do I check my answers? Extremely easy. What do you ask, your, ask yourself this question? What do you want? Okay, um, probably you want the reactions. Okay, the reactions. You can just go here and click reactions. That's these are the values of the reactions right here. Very fast, very efficient, and very uh, easy to do. Okay, you can toggle this by turning in on and off like that okay what about the shear force oh the shear force is this is the graph of the shear force okay now what about the moment and remember in the shear force it's giving you the maximum shear forces or they are label, labeling the maximum shear forces on the graph. Okay, what about the moments? This is the moment diagram. And the maximum moment is this value. Just, uh, just forget about these zeros because uh, it's doing this numerically. So it goes beyond uh, what you need. But this one, basically this is 19,200 and this is you know you can just forget about these zeros okay uh, 
The question now is what if the question statement was something like this find the moment or the shear value at x equals 18 1 8 what you do is just you go to the program shear forces turn it on and keep the data tab available and you just move your cursor until you reach x equals 18 just like that you might not get 18 ah, I got 18 so it's 400 the answer is 400 okay what about the moment at this point again switch this off this on and go all the way to 18 the moment is the value seen is 1.68 times 10 to the 4 which is a huge value and that's basically it uh, it's very quick very easy to do and uh, the next video we try to do a, a little bit more complicated Example.